Hey, good morning. This is the Orncleff Project, and on the Orncleff Project, we do things that interest me, but I'm not completely self-interested. I always The things that interest me probably also interest you, which is the basics of persuasion, influence, negotiation, business, deal-making, deal-closing, revenue, and turning revenue into income, scaling companies, and ultimately being happy. So if you can combine an in shape, having good cars to drive, traveling the world, eating good food, having something to do, people to love around you, something to look forward to, but that's it. Those are the only things that interest me other than I also like motorcycle riding, mountain bike riding, uh, CrossFit, been going bike riding lately and starting to go surfing, but those are the only things. On the line today is Corey Frank, who is a career sales professional. He knows what works, what doesn't in enterprise and corporate sales. And today we're going to talk about email. Email is the probably the number one way to get into a sale affordably, economically, low cost to acquire a customer. What works in email, what doesn't is our topic today. Very happy to have Corey on the phone here. Corey, Thank you for showing up. Absolutely. Thanks for that introduction. I think we should probably just stop the call right here and now before I say anything that would potentially diminish that introduction. So, okay. great meeting everybody. Well, thank you. Have a great morning. Yes, very nice. Uh, all right. But here's my problem, Warren. Yeah. Here's my problem. So today, um, as as we've talked about many times offline, and I wanted to to get this uh, get this in a can with you here too is I have an email problem and when I look at how me or my sales organization um, is going to generate top of the funnel leads or to sell to existing folks who are already in my pipeline it seems like there's so much noise out there with regards to other marketing type tools you know, yeah. I could do a mass email blast. I could do social, editorial, white paper, and all that stuff works. But it kind of led to the discussion that you and I had about email and is email dead? Yeah. And what situations is email still appropriate today from a business to business, either lead gen or communication medium to medium to get folks to do um, uh, or perform a call of action? Well, I think the day after episode 73, the last episode of Game of Thrones, <laughs> the we have to only you're only allowed the quote from in old the Englishy, so every word has to have an e. You're only allowed the quote from the show which is, you know, um, the king is dead, long live the king. So email is dead, long live email. Right. So people have been trying to kill off email forever. Um, did you ever use Google Wave? Uh, it, your answer doesn't matter because it's gone. But <laughs> right. Was it available on the Zoom? Yeah. Uh, so Google Wave, uh, you know, tried to kill off email. Multiple things have tried to kill off email. Email is going to be around for quite a while. Um, email has changed in the way it works. But so one of the things that's causing the problem is. Unless you recognize the name and unless you recognize, you know, that the email is coming from, and unless you recognize the topic is valuable, and unless you recognize the first couple lines is valuable, you skew it as marketing. Uh, and then the response rates go way down, right? And so, so too many things get skewed as marketing. And then the you know AI and machine learning and intelligence engines are getting smarter about you know what's marketing, what IP addresses things are coming from. It's harder to mass email and all that kind of thing. So email is becoming more complicated and more difficult, but it definitely works. So is email dead? Absolutely not. Does email work? Absolutely. Uh, the, and the change to make email work is actually a lot more simple than anybody imagines. It's really just a re turning the, you know, my new book is called Flip the Script, and it's really flip the lens. You just gotta turn the lens around because in, in the past, the lens on email was on you, the sender. Hey, we sell fertilizer, we sell better tasting dog chews, we have, um, you know, we have a better accounting service, we can help you learn how to make a million dollars, right? We have this value 
that we can give you. Here's a description of us. That's where the lens was, right? Um, on the shooter, not on the subject. And so what makes email work today is when you flip the lens around and the, it, and it sounds weird, when the email is about the person receiving it, not about the person sending it, then email can work. And when you look at how most sales folks today, you get solicited by email, certainly so do I with all types of services, et cetera. What are some of those big mistakes that I make? You mentioned the context. It's not all about me and the product, but what about um, what makes what makes Oren Clef open up an email? Yeah. Um, let's start. Let's start there. Yeah. So, and in fact, I have been. Uh, let me just pause on a second. A little sidebar. Uh, we may have talked about this before. So, when um, researchers of uh, internet viruses want to not when, but they constantly are scraping the world for new viruses to come up, right? So, what they do is they put unprotected machines on the net. Right, that is, um, you know, just like the equivalent of you leaving candy corn and raw meat and syrup and butter and Doritos in your front lawn, right? To see what comes and says, oh, this looks good, right? So, so these machines, I forget what they're called, but you know, they're virus traps, and they leave them out there on the net in all kinds of locations, and they're so easy to get to. They have no firewalls. They have no um, uh, you know, virus scanning, nothing. And so they come in and track all the viruses and then they assess them. So I've been doing these little experiments myself by leaving some of our email addresses quite exposed and seeing what emails, what marketing email, and signing up for every list, good list, bad list, uh, and seeing what emails come in. And then the ones that are good cold email, I've been inventorying. So I've got this inventory of, you know, 100, 200 really solid cold emails that almost you know, as I read them, it almost tripped me in. So what works and what doesn't based on what I'm really seeing, not on sort of the philosophy of email. Does, does that make sense? And, and, mm -hmm, and, and anybody can do this, right? And you're just set up an email, you know, in your company or on Gmail and just sign up for things you normally, you know, might not sign up for because you'd be afraid of marketing and spam and, you know, what you get. Set your spam filters on zero. Um, if you are especially sensitive to political and uh, the human body, for lack of a better word, don't set your filters down so low because you're going to see things. You're going to see words you never heard in the Bible. That's <laughs> if you remember that was from a, wasn't that a Paul Simon song, uh, right? I've been slandered, lied to. I've been called words I never heard in the Bible. One step ahead of the county line. Whatever, those I, aren't the words, but yeah. Yes. Okay. But if I've heard them on the wire, then it's a good take. Then it's probably yeah, appropriate. Yeah, right. If you, if you watch the wire, gotcha. you're going to be fine with turning your spam filters down to zero donuts. Okay. Um, I understand. So, so the stuff that comes in that makes me look is uh, primarily, and I get a lot of this because my book and it's pretty easy to see media on me. Hey, I'm a fan of Pitch Anything. I watch the videos. I especially like the video on London Real. Okay, this is not a robot. In the future, this email will be done by a robot, right? By AI. Uh, but for right now, I go, hey, this is a real person taking some interest in me, right? And your, your sensibility around social connection and social risk. Because this guy knows about me Right now, he's a proponent, he's an advocate, he's a fan, if somebody likes me, if I just ignore him, right, I'm gonna reduce my social count by a little bit. He's gonna go, hey, I sent that guy a nice email, I'm a fan, I took some time out of my day to say hi, the guy never even replied. What a jerk, right? So, uh, the social context pulls me in and gives me a sense, A, I have to read it, B, I have to think about it, and C, I probably, have to reply, right? We can amp that up a bit from here. Uh, yep. so, so that's what makes me look. The second thing is if it's so precise to my problem on that day, you know, then, then I have to look, right? Um, did you, you know, well, here's a huge problem I have. We're signed up for 75 different SaaS products of which we use four, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> and they're billing $19, $29, $75. Yeah. Some of them are $199. You know, somebody took a look at it and go, this is five, $6,000 a month that a product we don't use. Yeah. They're just chunk, 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 chunk. You know, mm -hmm. um, apparently I don't care about, so, oh, Corey, hey, I do, suddenly I care about $6,000 a month. You gotta wait to see my new truck. <laughs> Oh, you're really? gonna go nuts, yeah. You're gonna go absolutely nuts. Are you continuing to get? Uh, let's see. You keep regressing in the decades. So you have your 1983 Marty McFly Toyota. Yeah. Right. I think that uh, that's in there right now. Yeah. And you have your your monster truck for for Asher certainly. Yeah. And um, um, yeah, I'm gonna guess uh, uh, a flatbed. Um, <laughs> ooh. Let's see. I'll keep going. I'll send. I'll send you a picture here while uh, while you keep talking about the email. Yeah, yeah. So email. Uh, yeah. So I got to send you a picture of the new truck. You're gonna lose your mind. And uh, I know what you're thinking it's a it's a fire truck, which I am trying to buy, but it's not a fire truck this time. Uh, so okay. Uh, so that's things that are so specific, like how to um, unsubscribe from SaaS products, right? So if that came in, I don't care if it's a cold email a frozen email, a warm email, like I need that today, I'm basically gonna look. And that's what the hyper volume guys are trying to do is a nice, friendly, fairly short, focused email. And if they catch me on that day, then I'm in their funnel. We, you and I- so social- Yeah, social. Social, social relevance or problem specific relevance. Problem specific. Those are the two things that make me look. And both of those, obviously, from a mass email uh, perspective, just just don't work. And and these email strategies, from if I'm a if I'm an inside salesperson, if I'm a field rep, if I'm trying to raise money, if I'm a realtor, and I want to re-engage with a past buyer, or yeah. I want to uh, engage with a targeted prospect, um, those the the the, the mass um, big net big boat throw the net in the ocean trying to capture a couple of folks just um, just just doesn't seem like a good use it's, it, uh, it, of time. It's a hope builder, but it's not a deal builder. Yeah, it doesn't because it, it when you go, hi, my name is Corey. I'm part of XYZ company, and we have a product which can reduce your costs, impre increase your throughput, make you tanner, make you more in shape, increase your bottom line revenue, your top line revenue, your operating margin, your EBITDA, and make the sun shine more often in your geography. I'd love to show you what we have. We've been awarded Microsoft's, you know, ACT Developer of the Year, uh, and the uh, uh, the Queen of England frequently discusses us on her podcast, and we won the uh, Edwards Award number uh, three years running. Love to show you a little bit more about our software. Please click here to sign up for a demo. That is all about the got sender, it, it. right? And that's most of what we get. Hi, you know, um, yes. my name is Greg. I'm contacting you from, um, you know, what did I get the other day? Uh, well, I mean, this is, so you get semi-custom. Hi, Orrin Claff. Um, is Intersection Capital interested in a better way to manage uh, databases of potential investors? Uh, we're Capital IQ, the largest list of investor databases, recently bought you know, by JP Morgan and part of the XYZ group, and our customers are Goldman Sachs. Love to show you a little bit about what our soft cap software capability is. Um, do you have time for a call? So that self, that, that's so self-absorbed right. when you hear it sent back to you and the playback back to you. Yet, why, why is it that that's how the majority of the emails, right? If I looked at your inbox or my inbox, the, the 70 to 80 emails you're going to get today, 95% um, of them that aren't from yeah. your mom or somebody who wants to talk about Game of Thrones will be self-absorbed spray and pray that. How, how, did we, how do we fall into that? I mean, a little bit, you talk a little bit about this in Pitch Anything and in certainly some of the podcasts that, that well, you've done, but... It, but as a basic perspective, how did we as sales reps fall into that trap where it's all about us? Yeah, here's how. Because it, it works for big companies. When you have infrastructure, right? So you have a CTO, you have a chief marketing officer, 
you have data compliance and you have guys who can really mail millions of emails without getting, you know, and, and handle all the TCP IP issues, have, you know, pay to be on Gmail's, um, you know, approved senders list uh, and really do the IT right. Then, right, so if, if you have a big budget to do that, you can send out these mass emails. Then if the responses go to very low compensated SDRs, and those SDRs can be the first line to percolate all the responses. Then, so, you know, then they kick those up to salespeople and maybe those get kicked up to closers. So it does work for very large organizations. It won't work for you in a small, medium-sized organization because you don't have the IT, right? You don't have the SDR, the sales development rep infrastructure, right? You can't afford the list and you can't operate that at scale, and then ultimately, if you really want to make it practical, uh, you can easily get involved with low quality leads that are yes. consuming a lot of your time. So you're using your highest valued rep, which is you, to deal with super, to deal with um, leads that come in from super spammy mass outreach. And that's a disconnect. So without the infrastructure, you have to use a different system. You can't use mass email. It will take you out at the knees, for lack of a better um, description. I understand. That's uh, that's great. Uh, great advice. When you when you when you talk about the tone of a pitch and status up front and local star power and um, leading with data, or sorry, leading with a, a big idea story and then following up with with data, does those same tenants apply to um, an email, um, right? I'm gonna, we know we're gonna do social relevance or we're gonna do a problem specific relevance pitch, but do I, my tone that I'm using, once I get in front of a group for a pitch, not a sales presentation, but a yeah. pitch, how does that, that, that apply or, 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 or similar to what I'm, what I'm using um, cool. uh, when I'm trying to close a deal? Well, this is interesting, and maybe um, just watching the time here today. Maybe we hit this as the last thing, and then we pick it up on uh, Monday again. Um, Absolutely. So, I think of it this way, Corey, is that um, when we start to move into pitching someone, and it's fairly cold, right? So, let's say an email came in, it hooked somebody, right? Uh, we get on the line, or we get on Skype. When I say hook, I mean that's the whole point, like hook set up, path to payoff, payoff, you know, is one model, right? So it's got a, a hook is, is bring somebody into your system with interest. You set up a call, they agree to the call, and you get on there, right? Um, I think they are very, I, I know I am, I'm concerned when I get on a call that was generated by a pretty cold email, what my time investment, how much time this is going to take, how much time this is going to waste, I you know, I, I know I have to be patient until I see the benefit or the value or I know the value isn't there. That's gonna, that can take up to an hour, right, to get to the point where I can make a decision. Should I use these people to take care of my lawn? Because my lawn is looking dry and shabby, okay? Uh, I need some time with the rep. I need to hear about the company. You know, I need to hear their pitch. I need to just get a sense of it. Um, so, so leaning back, I think... From a tone and pace standpoint, if you are focused, direct, and organized, it sub-communicates um, that you, the seller, are busy and you're not going to waste time. Hey, guy, really, Corey, really appreciate you getting on the call today, right? I got a couple things to go through here. Um, I can send you a little bit of information, but um, I know you and I want to get back to the coal mine as soon as possible. Um, we can't spend the whole day talking about Corey's Lawn at, you know, 115 South Dennis Drive. So three things for me affect lawn care today. Um, and it's really the only thing to worry about. Water, uh, square footage, and low consumption, low water consumption, high volume foliage. Those are the three things that really matter. If you want to talk about those things, I'll go through them really quickly. If those things don't matter to you, literally just hang up on me while I'm talking. I'll think that you drove into a parking garage. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> um, so that might be extreme, but you could see, you could feel the tension in that I need to maximize our time together. And in doing so, a whole cascade of positive things happens. The stakes raise, because when I'm moving fast as a salesperson, when I'm saying, hey, you could just hang up on me if this doesn't work for you, you know, tongue in cheek, it communicates that I'm busy, that I'm not going to negotiate price, um, that I'm easy to work with, that I'm direct, I'm going to respect your time, that I'm experienced. So a whole cascade of things come off of tone and pace. Um, so you don't have to tell people that you're busy. You don't have to tell people you don't negotiate price. You don't have to tell people you'll be direct and honest with them. You're showing them. So I think tone and pace give you this whole uh, a stream of benefits you might not even be aware of. Got it. So that implied status, that, Im that implied status is a result from how it's communicated, the, um, the, the ability to raise the stakes, the tone, and I'm going to carry that over to the email. And yes. So, in, 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 uh, so just in quick summary, and then we'll, we'll get back to the coal mine here on, uh, on, on our side as well as yours, is that we're talking about um, the, the, the lens has changed from me to you. Here's my takeaways from my sales organization. The lens has changed from me to you. The sh not the subject, right, used to be the... Uh, the goal, and now that has flipped. It's all about the subject. Yes. And um, the email subject links that make me look, if I'm a prospect or a buyer who should buy more, it's social relevance and it's problem specific relevance. I don't want to use the highest quality resource that I have in an organization with, you, which is me, to be involved in busy work and low probability efforts such as mass email. And then lastly, I want to make sure that the tone and the pace of that email matches more closely what I'm going to say in that presentation. So I can't have an overly flowery, supplicative email and then get into a very um, assertive, um, high-stakes, status-endorsed pitch. Completely. It's congruent if I T do it that way. Totally agree. 100% agree. Fantastic. Well, why don't you just give me those four points out of this gate? We could have saved ourselves about 30 minutes. Yeah, well, um, I didn't know them 30 minutes ago, but it takes... <laughs> no. Why don't you ask... That's great. Why don't you ask better questions 30 minutes ago? Why doesn't the coffee should, guy bring uh, in coffee, you know, before it's ready? Why doesn't anything happen before it's time? So why doesn't the sound guy have a microphone up your shirt 24-7 so we don't have to take the first 10 minutes? Well, um, I think now our final, did, did you watch the uh, final Game of Thrones episode? I did not. Oh, okay. But I hear, um, yeah. I hear Marge Simpson took the throne. I, I'm mixing my metaphors. Yeah, yeah, Marge I, I, There's a lot of fun, finales. Man, it was, no. Seven, seven close. I forget which. It was, yeah. it was Lightning yeah. McQueen. But, and, <laughs> and this doesn't give it away at all, but this is exactly, I think, the way to cap this off. Uh, so one of the characters apologizes. Sorry, I wasn't there for you. I was somewhere else. Uh, I, you know, I feel bad that I wasn't there to help you. But I, you know, when I was off fighting this other demon, dragon, monster thing, and the guy says, mm -hmm. uh, "No apology needed. You were exactly where you needed to be." Got it. Okay, so As go. Kenny Banya, the great Kenny Banya, would say, "That's gold, Jerry." Sure go. Goes. Go tattoo that on your arm. Love that. Okay, Corey, um, I'll talk to you next All right, Monday. Friend. All right, we'll do we'll it. We'll talk to you next Monday. You got okay. it. Talk Thanks, to you soon. guys. Okay, this has been the Oren Claff Project. We don't have a big sign-off that really mm. explains pe to people everything that we covered, everything we're going to cover next time. If this isn't for you, then hang up on me and go watch whatever it is you want to watch. Motivation, meditation. What's another M? Motivation, meditation. Okay, let's just stay away from M's right now that end in tation. Okay. Uh, so see you tomorrow. This has been the Orn Claff project.